It's been a long old time since we last covered the Lightning Network, and a lot has happened since then, from outages to adoption. Yes, Lightning has had it all. And when I say it's had it all, I mean just that. For a quick glimpse of what's in store, look no further than the whole month of October, in which the network reached a milestone capacity of 5,000 BTC and also suffered two major outages in its LND implementation all in the space of a month. Now, while the outages didn't cause any real damage to the network, they did remind us that it still has a long way to go in its development. But that shouldn't dampen all those developments achieved by those working on Lightning thus far, especially as regards the progress we've seen over the past year. So, for starters, as I mentioned earlier, the Lightning Network finally reached a capacity of 5,000 BTC early last month. That's more than double the capacity it had back in August of last year. Now, this is, of course, a good thing, as more capacity allows for faster transactions, more liquidity, and a larger transaction volume. A big driver of this increase in capacity is the massive adoption the network has seen in this time frame. Apart from El Salvador, countries like Switzerland, Gibraltar, Bahrain, South Africa, and Argentina have been home to various initiatives that have pushed forward the adoption of Lightning. Gibraltar, in particular, has seen many businesses, including major retail franchises such as Costa Coffee, Card Factory, and Hotel Chocolat, using the Lightning Network to accept BTC as payment around the territory. Meanwhile, Miami, Florida has also seen over 85 merchants onboarded to the network by Lightning Network infrastructure provider Ibex. Similarly, on the e-commerce front, OpenNode, LaunchCart, and Strike have been key players in enabling the integration of Lightning. While OpenNode and LaunchCart's partnerships enable any e-commerce store to receive payments on the Lightning Network, Strike has focused on partnerships with popular e-commerce players such as Shopify, NCR, the world's largest point-of-sale POS supplier, and payments firm Blackhawk. And speaking of payments, Cash App has successfully onboarded its 40 million users to the network by gradually expanding its Lightning services over the past few months. It first announced its integration with the network back in January. At the time, users were limited to sending BTC via Lightning with no provision for receiving. Later, in April, it expanded the functionality of the app by introducing three features. The first of which enabled users to receive BTC on Lightning. The second allowed users to auto-invest a percentage of their paycheck into Bitcoin. And the third rounded up payments made by users to the nearest dollar and bought Bitcoin with the difference. Finally, in October, Cash App once again extended its Lightning Network capabilities for US customers by stating that all Cash App transactions involving QR codes will default through Lightning unless otherwise specified. Now, if you're wondering what prompted Cash App to enable such tight integrations with the network, well, the simple answer is Jack Dorsey. Dorsey is the CEO of Cash App's parent company, Block, and is also a diehard Bitcoiner. He had actually announced his Lightning Network plans for Cash App way back in 2019. And while we're on the topic of Bitcoin maxis, Michael Saylor and his firm MicroStrategy have also been firm supporters of the Lightning Network. On top of its Bitcoin-heavy balance sheet, MicroStrategy is also actively looking at avenues to increase Lightning Network adoption, particularly in the domain of e-commerce. It even put up a job post stating that it was hiring a Bitcoin Lightning software engineer to create a Lightning Network-based software-as-a-service platform. Now, I am all for use cases, but the best way to fast-track adoption of the network as a payments channel is to provide new users with some sort of familiarity with existing systems. Something like, say, a debit or credit card. Well, you'll be glad to hear that the Lightning Network already has a debit card, so to speak. An Isle of Man-based company, Coin Corner, introduced its Bolt card in May of this year. Coin Corner describes the card as a, quote, 
offline Lightning contactless card powered by NFC, Bitcoin Lightning, and LNURL. Now, I rummaged through the internet to collect some reviews on how the product was received, and it seems like the feedback was generally positive. It does seem to have some limitations, though, the most notable of which is that you need to be a citizen of one of the 45 countries supported by Coin Corner in order to use it as a debit card. However, Coin Corner does state that it is actively expanding its supported jurisdictions. And just recently, Coin Corner partnered with IBEX to expand Bolt Card compatibility to El Salvador. Anyhow, that's enough talk about adoption. Let's talk about the network itself. Now, the Lightning Network officially went live in 2018. But, as with other blockchains, development never really stops. And every time the Bitcoin network undergoes a major upgrade, it's bound to have an effect on a Layer 2 solution like Lightning. And Bitcoin's latest upgrade, Taproot, seems to have done just that. Specifically, the upgrade has sparked development effects on the Lightning network towards a multi-asset future. One of the main criticisms of using the Bitcoin network as a payments channel is the volatile nature of BTC that leaves most participants hesitant to spend or accept it. Lightning Labs' Tarot Protocol and Galois StableSats are among the newest solutions that aim to rectify this problem by employing mechanisms that stabilize the value of one's holdings relative to their preferred fiat currency. While Galois StableSats attempts to do this directly on the Bitcoin network by using derivative contracts, the Tarot protocol uses both the Lightning network and Bitcoin network to introduce and transact via stablecoins on Bitcoin. Put simply, Tarot transforms Bitcoin's blockchain from only being able to transact in one asset, BTC, to being able to transact an unlimited number of assets, all while using the security and stability of the Bitcoin network and the speed, scalability, and low fees of Lightning. The Tarot protocol will convert the stablecoin into an equivalent amount of sats on the Lightning network during routing. And then it will convert it back to the original stablecoin or a stablecoin of the receiver's preference at the end of the transaction. While this preserves the integrity of the stablecoin during transactions, it exposes the participants to the risk of trusting the stablecoin issuer for its stability. The stablecoins on Tarot are likely to follow a centralized reserve model like Tether or Circle, effectively saddling the coin with the same reserve risks as those on other blockchains. However, the Tarot protocol is still at its alpha version, and my understanding of it is based on what I could glean from its current documentation. The final version of the Tarot protocol might be vastly different from the one we described today. So, take that with a pinch of salt. So folks, while we may be deep in bear territory right now with interest in crypto flatlining and sentiment in the toilet, remember that doesn't stop the development work on Lightning and elsewhere from continuing. There's still lots of work to be done, but as the time goes on, projects like Lightning are growing and evolving into the payment systems of tomorrow.